Over the weekend, we just had another LFS bus tour, like the video I shared a year ago. And so this time on the tour, I didn't really plan to film the tour because it's already been shared. Instead, what I did was grab some moments from the event that I liked, certain corals I thought were cool. We stopped at Frank's Tanks, which is the fish store by my house. And to be honest, I hardly filmed anything because I was busy just enjoying myself and starting my day. This guy was in plain sight. It's the Vertex Cerebra, the new controller that is being released in pre-sales now for about 369 or 389. That's pretty exciting. His reef tank is rocking. I also forgot to bring any kind of filters to clean up my, uh, my pictures, so I apologize for the blue in these images. This is Fish Paradise, and that's one of the fish stores I used to go to many, many years ago. And they're also close to my house. And they had some cool critters that were worth exploring. I love going to the tiny cubbies and looking for the tiniest invertebrates possible. How about these ginormous frogfish? Well, I say giant compared to the next one you're gonna see. They were pretty big. And I liked how that one was kind of active because a lot of times they stand around. So this little guy was facing away from the camera, but I waited and soon he turned around. Isn't he adorable? There's a hermit crab to the left to give you a sense of scale. And that feather duster is like a hitchhiker feather duster. The display tanks were filled with all kinds of pretty things and all kinds of fish caught my eye. I also like the look of this flame algae. Dragon's breath. And look at the size of this lionfish. You can't even tell. It was huge. I've always liked the war coral, and this is a painted one because there's different colors on the body. And there was all different sizes and shapes of bubble tips. This one had speckles in it, which is pretty cool. It was really tiny, maybe the size of a quarter. And then I found all these tunicates on their egg crate. And there was a bunch of different ones. I tried to film it to show them responding. You can see that uh, valve opening and closing on the left there, barely. And look at this, it's grown through both sides. You can kind of see the inside of a tunicate. A tunicate is a filter feeder, and they're very hard to keep alive in your tank, but sometimes they hitchhike in. And this stuff was growing everywhere in this system. So there must be a lot of nutrients in the water for them to do so well and to continue to spread. This next acro had two acropora crabs inside of it. Boy, I wanted them so bad, but I bought this coral instead that also had a crab within its branches. I just love the texture of this Acropora. Our next stop is Ocean's Avenue, and the first thing that caught my eye was this huge game console in the store that up to eight people could play at once, shooting at underwater denizens of the deep. It's kind of cool. We hung around, had lunch, looked at lots of cool things, found another bounce mushroom for sale. I have no idea what this one costs, but let's just pretend it's a thousand dollars. It's cool looking but uh, it's not gonna go in my tank because I have a rule against mushrooms. Never putting a mushroom in my tank again. And this right here is a massive Lobo. Ah, oh, so pretty. Orange, pink, big. I wouldn't mind having that in my reef. This right here is a hammer coral, in case you don't recognize it. How about this big SPS coral that a fish could swim down into and hide, only to reappear? Look at all the tiny polyps. Big, fluffy Acanthostrea polyps, and a very pretty clownfish. And here's a frog spawn colony that was almost translucent. I even spotted some Mila's Reef RODI system and filters in stock. Next we went to Apex Aquariums. And of course we all quickly hit all the tanks looking for what we wanted. I found some eye candy. I love how this bird's nest has grown to the surface. It's got a real cool reflection off the water. And this right here is encrusting Pacillopora that has landed on the walls of the tank and spread out. Basically a huge puddle appears on the glass, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger, and then polyps start to come out. The store is able to break off the branches and sell them on, as frags and continue to grow the skin. I found this little Acropora and I had to have it. So I picked that up and then we headed to our next store. I did spot these new skimmers, didn't know they were out yet. 
by Reef Octopus. At Dallas North Aquarium, there was an opportunity to spin a wheel and possibly win some prizes, and I was able to walk out with a box of Fritz salt. That was pretty cool. I also looked around and looked for invertebrates. I ended up finding a couple of snails I had to have, which were called wavy turban snails. I hadn't had those in 10 years. And this right here is called a green wolf eel. And you can understand where it gets its name from looking at the face. I didn't recognize this type of clownfish, but it kind of reminds me of those fancy ones because of the big long tail. It's kind of in the Clarky family. I really like the look of how these rays move through the water. And sometimes you see them at exhibits and in touch tanks. And then this rhinopius didn't move hardly at all. But his eyes are really, really cool. Hang on a second, let me show you something. Look, they're like crystal clear. Like they're not there. And it's almost like you're looking through their head when you look from the side. And to his right was another rhinopius, one that reminded me of coralline algae. And believe it or not, the guy standing next to me didn't even realize this was here. It had blended in so well, he thought just the yellow fish existed. He didn't spot this thing. Finally, we went to Elos Aquariums. And again, I had to walk out with a coral. I looked at everything. I was trying to resist. It's so easy to just find things you got to have when you go into a fish store. And I was looking for little tiny frogfish that I'd seen here before, but apparently it wasn't in this tank anymore. But there was still plenty of eye candy. Since my last visit there, they've changed these tanks right here. There used to be a third layer at the very top, but they removed that because it was hard to reach. They had a couple of walking dendros, which are pretty cool creatures. Uh, there's a worm that moves this thing across the substrate. This is one of those chalices that I always fall in love with. It's got a ton of little tiny speckles. It kind of makes me think of the universe, about the galaxies. And, you know, it's really hard to resist buying these things. I wish I'd had my Nikon with me to get you a better picture, but I did shoot a little bit of stuff here with my iPhone. Look at this thing. This thing is awesome. It's just the type of coral that I could stare at for long periods of time. And, you know, they say this hobby's relaxing. I don't know. I think sometimes it can be pretty exciting. And by the way, I knew you were going to ask me what this is, so there's the name, Mycidian. And then this coral here, oh, I don't know what it is, Stylophora maybe? It's definitely not a monopore digitata. And I know the photography here is terrible, but I did get a few close-ups and I got a frag of it, which is now inside my frag tank. So hopefully it'll grow into something nice. Unfortunately, on the way home, it broke into twigs. So I had to glue twigs onto a frag plug it just got broken on the bus. Uh, can't do anything about it, except wait for it to grow out. But it's a really pretty coral. I want to thank all 17,500 of you subscribers for following my channel. You rock.